What's up guys and welcome back to one of the final episodes of this little Ford Connect micro camper van conversion. So inside the van we're pretty much all completed conversion wise now. We have a full kitchen unit with a fridge, hob and sink, full timbre, door access for storage, things like that. We've got all the electrics in, we've got the 12 volt down lights, we have some sockets there for 12 volt power USB, we have the power for the fridge and some 240 volt hookup via an inverter as well. So one of the final jobs left to do in this is going to be to fit a diesel heater in the van and have the holes cut in the floor to allow for all of the exhaust and intake, things like that. I wasn't sure whether I'd actually be able to get a heater fitted into this van because obviously it is quite a small van in general and underneath you don't have a lot of space. Obviously most of the space underneath the van is taken up by things like your fuel tank your axles, things like that. There's not a lot of free space to allow all of the dropouts for the exhaust and the intake, but there should be enough space underneath the rock and roll bed side of things. And thankfully I have made this rock and roll bed removable. So I'm gonna be taking this out. I'm gonna be mounting the diesel heater underneath the rock and roll bed. It'll also get boxed in a bit because obviously under the rock and roll bed is gonna be storage space as well. And we don't want any storage things knocking into the heater as well. So by the end of this episode we should have a fully fitted diesel heater into this little Ford Connect micro camper van. And if you're looking for a similar heater yourself, check the links in the description below. That'll go out to eBay where I've bought this exact diesel heater from. And then as I say if we follow along we should be able to show you exactly how to get one fitted in as well. So first things first, as I say I'm going to get this rock and roll bed removed back out of the conversion. Just to give me lots of easy access into where the heat is going to be going. Then we'll get some pilot holes drilled out and marked out. We'll start drilling some holes through the floor. I'm going to be housing the fuel tank in the rear section of the kitchen storage area where the gas and the water bottles are going to be as well. So everything's going to be all tidied away there as well. And hopefully by the end of this episode we'll have a fully fitted diesel heater fed from the fuel tank and that should give plenty of heat in this small little camper van. I'll be surprised if that heater needs to run for more than five or ten minutes at a time to get this small little space fully up to temperature. So let's get cracked on, get the heater fully unboxed, we'll get the rock and roll bed out, I'll pick the video back up when it's ready to start marking out some holes, things like that, and as I say by the end of this episode we should have a fully functional diesel heater. So let's get cracked on. Right, so with the heater we now have the base plate mounted on and screwed on with the little nuts and bolts that go through. And I've also marked around where the heater was going to be going and I've now cut that out. A little bit of masking tape over the top because I've just been underneath spraying all of the metal that I've just cut as well. Just to give that a little protective coating. But now that's been painted this masking tape can come back up. As you can see, a little bits of paint and wax oil there just to protect the paint. So now that's done, we can get the heater mounted into that hole. Well, first things first, I'll get the exhaust and the intake mounted onto the pipes. It'll be a lot easier while it's out air, not mounted. We'll get the pipes fitted, we'll get the pipes down, we'll then get the heater mounted around this hole, get the fuel connected to it, attach some power, job done. And say it slowly but surely, we'll get there. So let's get those intake and outtakes mounted and then get the heater mounted over the hole. Right, so that's the heater mounted to the floor with the exhaust and the air intake going through the floor and they're fully secured under it as well. 
I've also ran the fuel pipeline going around around the back of the bed under the flooring along there and then it's going to pop back through there and into this cupboard and the fuel tank is just going to be sitting up against that side which still leaves full access to get in for water and gas bottles things like that as well so now the heat is mounted into the floor it's all the case of getting all the wiring done as well as you can see underneath or you might be able to see it is a bit dark but i've got the exhaust mounted facing the rear of the vehicle and towards the front over there again you might be able to see it there's the intake with the filter on it as well so they're well separated out from underneath the vehicle so now it's in place we need to get all the wiring ran obviously it needs power from the battery as well as a grounding and then wires for the controller and the pump as well i'm going to also mount the pump inside the cupboard as well so pretty much everything's going to be inside the cupboard tucked away nice and neatly then as i say we'll run some uh, wire, wiring round and we'll put the controller with all the other electrics on the side of the kitchen unit as well so it's coming along there's the first main issue all sorted out cutting the hole in the floor so i say now that's done let's get the wiring all sorted and soon enough we should be able to get this heater fired up right so i'm just about to start putting the fuel tank together and i need to drill a hole for the nozzle to get the nozzle through from the bottom of the tank that will then allow all the fuel to actually flow from the tank itself now these tanks don't have any pre-drilled holes or anything but they do have some mounts as you can see there at the bottom this little rectangular part that's one of the areas where you can put the uh, nozzle coming out and they've got them on both sides as well so you can choose which way you around you want it as well the easiest way to do it is literally to drill a hole the same size as the nozzle itself through the tank then either run a bit of string or a coat uh, hanger anything like that through the hole out the main top side then you can feed the nozzle through that and follow it through and down i'll show you what i mean as we're about to do it now but that's the basics around it as well so we'll get this nozzle in place and then we'll be able to get the tank mounted and get it connected up to the heater Right, so with the hole drilled for the nozzle and that's the right fit as i say eight mil hole is what's needed for a nice neat fit on the nozzle i'm now just going to run a little bit of cable through this hole turn the tank upside down and feed this cable back out the main entrance at the top there as i say i'll fish the cable through that and then once the cable's through we'll put it onto the nozzle pull the nozzle back through and that's the easiest way to get it secured so i'll see if i can fish this out now Right, so as you can see, I've then I've now just fed a small little cable through the nozzle end, through the tank, and pulled it out of the main fill point. So I'm now just going to put the cable through the nozzle, the nozzle end first itself. We'll put a small, very loose little knot on the back of this, one that will pull through easily as well. So just a really, really small, loose little knot that will come loose easily. And now the nozzle's through, we can just pull this cable through and it'll feed the nozzle all the way through the inside of the tank and out of that hole. Pull out the cable, there's the nozzle. Keep pulling and we'll get the thread through. There we go. And then just a good yank on that cable and the cable should come through as well. But that's the quickest, easiest way to get the nozzle through a pre-drilled hole on one of the fuel tanks for the Chinese diesel heaters. So I'll get this cable pulled through, get the securing nut in place, and that'll be it. And there we go, that is the nozzle fully fitted on the fuel tank. Quick and easy, five minutes, not even that, to get it fed through. No messing about or anything like that as well. Nice, quick, easy method to get the nozzle through on the fuel tanks for the Chinese diesel heaters. Thank you. 
Right, so that's the diesel heater all fully mounted now. I've got the control unit up on the side panel. I couldn't get it where the other electronics were just because the cabling wasn't long enough. But it's nice and out the way there and it means it's easily accessible whether the rock and roll bed's in either the bed or the seat in position as well. So the only thing I've got left to do now is to actually box the heater in because with it being under the bed and this is going to be a storage area for general storage as well I just don't want any items knocking into it while it's driving around. So I'm just going to do a quick ply boxing in just to be sure that nothing under the bed can knock it while the vehicle's in motion or anything like that. Once it's fully boxed in, the only thing we've got left to do then is put some diesel in the fuel tank, fire it up and make sure it all works. But as I say, first things first, I'm just going to cut down some ply sheets just to be able to box the heater in, just for more, the, more for safety and security more than anything else. So I'll get it all boxed in and I'll pick it back up when I've got some diesel and then we'll get it fired up and give it a test. Right guys, we'll finish boxing the diesel heater in now. As you can see, just a basic ply frame. And I've just turned the diesel heater on for the first time and you can probably hear all of the hot air that's starting to come out of it as well. All the control unit up there is working as it should be as well. And you might be able to hear the pump just ticking away from inside the cupboard. So the full pump's working, the full diesel heater's working. As you can hear, this is winding up now. This is going to full power because it's only just been turned on and then obviously when the van itself got up to the desired temperature that's set on there then the fan speed would reduce right back down just into tick over mode more than anything else but as I said just because this is the first time it's been turned on it's going to be going up to full speed full temperature and then it'll go back down again as well but that is a fully working fully functional diesel heater fully fitted into this little Ford Connect Micro Camper Van as you can hear it's all fully working as well you can't feel the hot air but I'm certainly feeling it there that's nice warm hot air coming out with a diesel heater and it's fully boxed in just to be protected from any storage items that might be left under the bed as well so if I just reach back up and turn this back off and that'll wind back down as you can see it's gone into the off position and whenever you turn these diesel heaters off, they do still run generally for around about 90, 90 to 120 seconds, just so they go into a full cool down mode, rather than just shutting the full heater off and then all the heat inside it doing any damage. So whenever you turn the diesel heaters off, they do always go into a cool down cycle mode for a minute or two, just to be sure that the internals are all done. But as you can see, that's now fully shut down now, the diesel heaters, uh, the pump, has pretty much calmed down now as well so that's how i fitted that little chinese diesel heater in this little micro ford connect camper van conversion if you're after one of these heaters have a look in the description below beneath the video i'll be linking out to ebay where i bought this particular little diesel heater they're really good really efficient and quite cheap now these days as well you can get the diesel heaters for under 100 pound and as i say that's a fifth a sixth of the price compared to some of the branded ones as well so I hope you found this video useful on how I've fitted a little diesel heater into this Ford Connect micro camper van conversion. If you did, consider giving the video a good old thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. And feel free to go through all the previous videos of this conversion from start to finish. Because we're getting down to the very final finishing touches of the conversion in this van. We're going to have one more episode to come and that's going to be fitting in a split charge relay and doing some wax oil chassis protection underneath as well and then that'll be it so if you haven't seen the previous videos have a flick through on my channel and hopefully we'll see you next week on the final episode of this little ford connect micro camper van thanks for watching cheers